if I write the sentence that Tim is a good student and Tim is going to do well on Tim's test, hearing Tim's name over and over again gets a little obnoxious. So instead we write the sentence like Tim is a good student and he is going to do well on his test, where we use he and his as pronouns to replace Tim simply for the sake of making our sentence shorter and avoiding redundancy. When you use a pronoun, there are three basic considerations you have to make. First, you have to make sure that the type of the pronoun is correct. Pronouns like he and she can only refer to people or pets that we give human names to. The pronouns it, which, and what usually refer to things. And the pronouns that, them, and they can refer to either people or things. For example, if you use the sentence, did you see what Joe married? I'm surprised he ever dated that. You would be creating an extremely offensive statement. And that's because the pronouns you used are typically reserved for animals and things. Whereas if you say, did you see who Joe married? I'm surprised he ever dated her. There's nothing inherently positive or negative about those statements. You also have to be keenly aware of the number of items a pronoun is referring to. Pronouns such as it, that, and he can only refer to one item or person, whereas pronouns such as those and they can only refer to more than one item or person. Your exam will do its very best to confuse you as to whether you should use a single or plural pronoun. Here is a very common mistake. The sentence says the company is preparing their tax return. And there is referring to the company. Now this is a mistake that people make all the time because they generally assume that a company has more than one person working for the company. But still, the tax return belonged to just one company. So the sentence should read, the company is preparing its tax returns. Here's another trap with a plural pronoun. The sentence says the group of lions found their way back home. And when you listen to it, it doesn't sound that bad because there is really close to the noun lions. Lions is plural, there is plural, so to your ear it sounds fine. But a good rule to remember is that once you have your first preposition, in this case it's of, the of marks the beginning of the adjective phrase. And pronouns don't refer to adjectives, they refer to nouns. So in this case, of lions is just describing the group. And since the group is singular, the pronoun we use must be its. By far the most common aspect of pronouns tested is ambiguity. When you use a pronoun, it has to be crystal clear exactly what that pronoun is referring to. Pronouns usually refer to either the subject of the sentence or the noun that is immediately before the pronoun. A pronoun becomes ambiguous when the noun before the pronoun is different from the subject. So in this case we say Janelle has a roommate and she is driving across town. But it's unclear who she is referring to. It could refer to Janelle, which is the subject of the sentence, or she could refer to the roommate, which is the noun immediately before the pronoun. A simple way to fix that sentence is to take the noun roommate and make sure you use it the first time only after the pronoun she. So that way when we say Janelle moved into an apartment and she is driving, Janelle is the only singular person noun in the sentence, so we know she can only refer to Janelle. Sometimes it can seem completely obvious what a pronoun is trying to refer to, but that pronoun can still be considered ambiguous from a grammatical standpoint. For example, in this question we are wondering whether Taurus will continue to visit game parks and see rhinoceroses after their horns are trimmed. Now, it's completely illogical that we would try and trim the horns on Taurus, but that doesn't fix the grammatical problem that we have two plural nouns before the pronoun there. So from a grammatical standpoint, there is still considered ambiguous. 
In the correct version of this sentence, we simply replace the pronoun there with animals, because animals could only refer to rhinoceroses and not tourists. In this sentence, we have a similar problem with the pronoun them. The sentence talks about chambers inside a pyramid and tourists that were exhaling moisture. So since we have two plural nouns before the pronoun, them could refer to either chambers or Taurus. In the second example, the problem with ambiguity is fixed, but it seems strange because we still have the pronoun them, and we still have the subject chambers, and we also have the noun tourists. But there's a very important difference in the way Taurus is used in each sentence. In the first sentence we have tourists that were exhaling moisture. And the that were exhaling moisture, that's an adjective describing which tourists we're talking about. In the second sentence we have moisture exhaled by tourists. And in this case the exhaled by tourists, that's used to clarify what kind of moisture we're talking about. So in the first sentence tourists is a noun. And we know that because the noun is doing a verb. The Taurus are exhaling moisture. In the second example, we have Taurus as an adjective. And we know it's an adjective in part because of the preposition by. Remember, a preposition usually signifies the end of the noun and the beginning of the adjective. And since them is a pronoun, it must refer to a noun. There is no such thing as a proadjective. So then, from a grammatical standpoint, it is clear that them must be referring to chambers.